Today I'm sitting down with Nick Garzilli of ET3, Evacuated Tube Transport Technologies, and we're going to be talking about his current initiatives to actually get one of these systems built in the state of California, and how you out there can help human civilization make the first step towards a Type 1 global transportation system. ET3 is a capsule or pod which rides on a maglev track levitated by magnets inside of a tube with the air sucked out so that there's virtually zero resistance allowing ultra-fast, super-efficient transport. Right now the state of California is looking to build a mass transit system and most of the people there think that high-speed rail or trains are the only viable option. So we're trying to start a campaign to spread awareness to voters out there that there are other much better options on the table. ET3 is cleaner, cheaper, faster, and arguably safer than high-speed rail technology. My friend Nick Garzilli is leading that effort and also working on a separate project to build ET3 in Las Vegas. So I'd like you all to give a warm welcome to one of the pioneers in the coming transportation revolution. Thank you, Nick, for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you, Jeremy, for having me. I guess I'm Nick Garzilli. I'm the COO of ET3, and I'm here in Los Angeles, and we, we are working diligently to get ET3 built, and we're really close to getting it done in Vegas, literally just just crossing the T's and drop, dotting the I's before we sign the contract. We're going to be breaking ground this year, and you're going to be able to ride this in 2016, hopefully before the election. But knowing, uh, you know, one of the things we are up against is California high-speed rail and the idea of high-speed trains that really aren't high-speed when they're stocked. Um, they're right. complete boondoggles. We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars of taxpayer money to build something that'll have to be subsidized for the forever. Um, so it's ancient, the, ancient technology. Uh, really, it, it's it needs to be built. This new thing needs to be built. I'm, I I applaud your efforts for doing it, man. <laughs> Well, yeah, and it's, you know, ET3 is, it's real, it, compared to a high-speed train, it's one-tenth the cost, it's about one-thirtieth the materials. Um, the biggest difference is that it can be built so fast, it's re really, you're erecting it. You don't have to support 200-ton locomotives. The capsules, uh, ET3 capsules only weigh 400 pounds, yet they carry 800 pounds of people or cargo. Right. So, the best thing about it, I think, is that you don't have to sit there and wait in a huge line. There's no set train schedule where you have to be, uh, the trains come every 15 minutes or, you know, even the subway. People who, who ride the subway, it's old technology. They, they wait for a whole platform full of people to pile up and you have to wait for your train to come. This would be like literally on-demand capsules there waiting for you. You just hop in and go. And, it, and yeah, uh, honestly, you would, you would probably, there are different ways you could do it. You go to the station or there probably be an ET3 app. You just press the button, see where you're going. Your capsule would come and you would hop in it. And the big difference between ET3, ET3 is more like a car. So you're either going to be traveling alone, you know, in your own personalized space. Um, or maybe a couple people to save costs that are going to somehow going to the same exact location you're going to. But yeah, you go point A to point B nonstop. There's no transferring this and that. You go as far as the network will take you. So that and that's the whole idea is is to build this new physical internet. We are stuck in old modes of transport. There hasn't been a huge huge uh, paradigm shift in transportation for almost 100 years now. Right. And so that that's where we are. I mean, passenger. Trains, we planes, and automobiles. Going backwards in time now because they want to build a high. They want to build a train. Trains in 1910 they had a 90 percent market share of, of passenger uh, of passenger travel between cities. Cars and planes displace trains for that use. And now we want to go back in time to build a high speed train. And yeah, it goes. You know what? It'll go maybe uh, 170 miles an hour, maybe 200. But then it has to come to a stop. And um, anyway, ET3 is is uh, is just going to change everything for so many people. You're going to be able to do, you're going to be able to go places and do things you never thought possible. And all that money that you spend on your car insurance and your um, car insurance, airplane tickets, um, all, all, all. Well, the also stops. the trucking industry and the transport industry of goods and lo and logistics of just sending um, packages. You know what it's going to do? You send it, send things through ET3, uh, cargo transports as well. I mean, have they, what what have they looked into that as well? I mean, oh, of course, yeah, cargo. Listen, the, the worldwide transportation market is an 8.7 trillion dollar annual market. And we believe ET3, within 25 or 30 years, will capture 90% of that market for things over 30 miles of distance. Yeah. And it's 
basically split half cargo, half passengers. So unlike a high, unlike the high speed rail, which is just for people uh, going through some of the most prime farmland in the world, just tearing it up, ET3, you're going to be able to put produce picked right from the right from the vine or or the plant or whatever and put it right into the capsule one one pallet minimum order at a time and send it anywhere in the network yeah. straight to market boom without using a drop of gasoline or oil so that and and the thing is they don't have you won't have to lay down these tracks and spray it with the chemicals to keep the plants from growing on the tracks and all that kind of stuff that they do you could have farmland literally growing underneath this thing and uh, solar panels on the top of it the whole length of the way providing f clean energy and renewable Definitely energy the whole a two-inch strip of solar panels on top of the tube will power the whole thing. Yeah, it was absolutely. It'll be all solar and powered. Wait, on the tubes, you're gonna be able to put fiber optics and other stuff. I mean, it's gonna be. Easy yeah, it'll be it'll be an internet backbone as well as a transportation backbone. You know, you can. Yeah, well, state-of-the-art fiber optics on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know why uh, every billionaire on the planet isn't investing in this. They're stupid not to. I mean, this thing is going to be the future. I, I knew it. The minute I thought about this idea, I had this idea on my own. It turns out it's a lot older than that Jules Verne uh, and everything. He, he had first thought this the, up. The, so, you know, people say, oh, this is the Jetsons or this is Futurama. Listen, this idea of traveling in a tube that has the air sucked out of it goes back 100 years, over 100 years, to Jules Verne. Robert Goddard started had the idea in 1910, 1920. He got building. He got busy building rockets. You know, he, he's you, you look at Wikipedia. Him, he's credited with building the first liquid-filled rocket. Yep. There's the Goddard Space Center. Well, when he died, 131 of his patents, uh, his papers, um, were filed by his wife, who used to be his secretary. One of them was a vacuum tube transportation system. Yep. It's 1947, I believe. Then the Rand Corp did studies in, in, the, in the late 60s and 70s. There's a there's a paper called VHST that's different than ET3, it's a bigger vehicle floating on liquid helium, but I can show you, and I'm sure you can pull it up, a March 1972 article, front page LA Times, it says New York to LA in 30 minutes. Yeah. Now we, we only want to do it in 45, but still, that was 1970. Yeah. So this this idea is 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 is, is old, but, and that's It's long overdue. It's, it's long overdue. overdue. Uh, they're, exactly. they're, I mean, so, they're really they're thinking about throwing away all that money to build a high-speed rail system that's ancient, 200-year-old technology, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a waste. They're throwing that money down the toilet. They, they could be building the future and uh, starting it there. What it would, I mean, alone, what it would do to the economy out there with the time that people would save, not have to sit in traffic, not have, not have to sit in the bus stop waiting for trains. Uh, <laughs> so what, what, the way that it's set up now is that they tax us to build roads. So we then have to buy cars. And then they get so saturated that we're just sitting in traffic, spending our money on the car and the gasoline and the insurance, just wasting our time as, it, as the car pollutes into the air that we breathe. Yeah. So, I don't know why people aren't doing this. We're trying to, ET3 and, and other transportation technologies that will all be networked. This is a physical internet, so you'll take an ET3 to say from LA to San Francisco, and then to go that last couple miles, there'll be a, you know, a local area of personal personal rapid transit (PRT) that'll go 30 and 40 miles an hour because ET3 can't go around a street corner. Right. But then you build this physical internet where people will be able to hop on cars. You know, you probably have the Google cars. I mean. Google I was car, thinking like a pod, a little pod system that could be even even one that w with wheels that could pop out and you could just jump off the like the low the low speed track and just and just uh, drive to like down the street wherever you need to go like a little you know. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly. It's called a Mopod. Yeah. It's inside the ET3 capsule. It's a small small vehicle and there's a lot of other things that that will fit in there. Um, so yeah, you just go up to the station and. Um, it needs to be built. It needs to be built, and I'm glad that uh, people like you are taking that vision and, and, and making it a reality. I remember back in 2002, I had thought this idea up on my own, uh, just thinking about a vacuum and, and uh, the high-speed, uh, I mean, the high-temperature superconductor levitation. So what, are you, what, is, what is actually going on with this uh, initiative? You're trying to raise some money to get it on the ballot. Is it already on the ballot? People can't even vote for it. The, you're trying to get it so they it's on the ballot so they can vote for it, right? Is that is that... My understanding was yeah so right. so what happened so what what happened is I saw the win every two years California has an election and I saw the window of opportunity closing 
to get an initiative in front of voters in 2014. So I did a little bit of research and I, I contacted one of the top constitutional attorneys in Sacramento and told him about what I wanted to do. I wanted to create an initiative that'll let us give us the right of way so we can compete against high speed rail at no cost to taxpayers. So he really liked the idea and he, um, we, he agreed to, to do the work. So I hired him and I thought this is a great thing to have to start a, a crowdfunding campaign for. So but then without any, any experience doing crowdfunding campaign, I just threw an Indiegogo campaign up there and other licensees came to help me. And now to support the creation of this beautiful document, the Transportation Innovation Act, which was filed on January 2nd. Um, people are buying the ET3 hats and t-shirts and hoodies, right. and they're giving contributions, and it, it's, it's getting paid for. It's actually so it's, taken it's really off. It's really exciting. I'm really excited. I'm going to tell people to go to that link. I'm going to put it in the description below on this video. Go to that link and check it out. Even if you don't have much to donate, at least get a hat or a t-shirt. Help support this. Yeah, there's stickers. Even for, there's stickers for starting at 10 bucks. So, I mean, any, any contribution is great. Whatever you can. Just, just know that you're helping something that is revolutionary. Yeah. This is, I, have fired, I have fired the first shot in the transport revolution. Yeah. Because what the Transportation Innovation Act does it, empower, it tells the Public Utilities Commission to find the right-of-way for Hyperloop and ET3 and local area personal, personal rapid transit um, technologies, and at no cost to taxpayers, all privately funded, have us build this, and it suspends the high-speed rail from going past phase one. You keep, they can keep building that train, but only so it's now compared against these new technologies. So, so when that, is that, that end? That when, does, I encourage you to do, 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 and that ends on January 7th, you said? Yeah, my birthday. I ended it on my birthday. Oh, like, man. So that's like so this three days away. Yeah, three days away. So how, how far do you have to go? To help, this, to help this campaign and, and to get your gear. So please, you know, don't, don't just wait. Don't I'm going to do this next week. Just do it right now. Go to Indiegogo and contribute whatever you can. Hear ET3, have your gear, learn about ET3, and start talking to people. The only thing holding us back is, is, is awareness, is public awareness. So really, this is becoming a political campaign to legalize innovation in transportation. And that's what this is. And really, that's going to affect uh, the, the entire oil crisis, the energy crisis with the oil markets too, because not, we're not just, we're not addicted to oil, we're addicted to the transportation that oil provides us with, you know? I've heard you say that before, and it's so true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, well, we need to unhinge oil from transport. Once we unhook that, then the price of oil can go up without crashing economies. Yeah. We'll still and be able to get I, to work. You'll still be able to. I, I know people that have had to quit jobs because they're not, they don't have they don't have enough money to pay for gas to drive there. You know. Yeah, or move, or, or let their house go into foreclosure. All the people that bought houses in the, in the empire that were commuting to work, at some point you have to make a decision. You want to keep your house or keep your job? People keep the job because you can't keep the house without the job. Yeah, so it's they, true. They just move closer to work. So right now, you know, it's it's they're pushing. They're trying to push people into living, um, you know, in hubs, in transport hubs, pushing them into old modes of transport, whether it be subways or high-speed trains. So, yeah, people want to know more about ET3. They can go watch some of the other videos we have up on the web about e evacuated tube transport and learn more about the details and the engineering about the technology. And, and, and uh, of course, they have a website, ET3.com. They can go check that out. I encourage everyone to check that link in the description. Get, get your hats. Go order to support this campaign, whatever. Go to ET3.com. This is going to be the transport revolution. 